Hey, what's up, guys? Back again with another Java video. This time, I'm going to show you how to work with the generics. He did the mash. He did the monster mash. The monster mash. It was a graveyard smash. He did the mash. It caught on in a flash. He did the mash. He did the monster mash. Okay, guys. So, um, so yeah, we're moving on from file output and uh, input for a little bit because. Um, we just wanted to go over the basics so you can get a fundamental understanding of it. But later on, we're actually going to cover I.O. more detailed, more fully, so you can actually use it whenever you want to, pretty much. That's my goal. But for now, um, we have a good enough understanding, so we're going to move on to what's called generics, which is our next, um, I guess you could call it, chapter in this little series that we have here. And so, yeah, so let's jump right into it. And so, yeah, I'll give you a simple, um, simple explanation of generics, okay? So... Whenever you're working with um, a class, for example, that class usually has, um, or an object, you could say, um, whenever you're working with objects and classes, usually that class or object has a certain data type associated with it, like string, integer, anything like that, okay? So with generics, we can actually give a class a parameterized, I can't really say the word that well, parameterized, <laughs> parameterized um, data type, okay? So that means that we can basically use the data type, we can give it a data type um, parameter basically, so that means that we can fit in any data type whenever we're using that certain method, class, interface, whatever we're going to use it with, okay? So if you, don't know, if you don't know what I mean, I'll be showing you in a second, but basically it just allows you to use data types as a template so that you don't, ex you don't have to actually set a new method example for every time you're using a different data type, okay? So anyway, um, that probably didn't make too much sense, but you're going to see exactly what I mean s in a second, okay? Because it's actually really simple and really cool, actually, okay? So, yeah, let's get started. So let's go ahead and make a class here. We'll ju we're not going to make a whole new file. That's just too much work. So we're just going to go ahead and make it in this file. Just make sure it's outside of your main class, of course. So we're going to call this class booty, because why not? Um, and then um, right here... It's where you're going to put your parameter name, okay? So this is actually where the data type will go into, okay? But since we're using a parameter, a data type parameter, basically, we're going to be giving it a name, like a variable name, basically, for the for the data type, okay? So we're just going to call it param type for now. You can literally call it whatever you want. It's just like a variable, like I said. Okay, so then you make the class brackets here. And so now we have the capabilities of doing anything that we do in an, inside of a regular class, okay? So let's go and make a variable, okay? So we'll say something like um, int um, variable, okay? So we just declared a variable, right? So that means that, um, well, actually, let's do this too. So we'll set, well, let's make a setter here. So whenever they generate the, uh, the uh, whenever they make the object, they can also set the variable. So that means they can set the variable, okay? So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. So let's just go ahead and make a uh, object of this type here. So booty booty1 is equal to new booty okay cool and so nothing happens quite yet because we didn't do anything so we can do booty1 dot set variable uh, we'll set it to 45 okay and then we're gonna print out booty1 just to see what the value is so booty1 dot variable I mean variable we're gonna print out variable so yeah let's print that out okay so of course we should get 45 because that's what we set it to good we get 45 right here and so Let's say that I actually want this to be a string, right? So we can't actually set this to a string. We'll get an error because, let me show you. So if we set that to a string, um, we'll get an error because obviously up here it's set as an integer, right? So yeah, so that means that um, whenever you're working with variables, very data types of a variable or method or anything like that inside of a class, you have to make sure you have this, the, the right method or right variable for it. So basically what we can do is, let me show you, we can use it as a parameter. So let me show you here. So param type, if we set it to, if we don't set a variable or data type for this variable, oops, wrong thing. <laughs> if we don't set a data type for this variable, it's just going to go ahead and take this parameter here. So that means whenever we uh, declare this set variable here, um, we can actually replace this with also that same data type, so param type. And so now, whenever we're using set variable, we can set it to any data type that we want to, which is awesome, okay? So if we print this out, it actually works now because um, we're setting, it knows that it's a string, okay? So basically, that's really cool. So um, yeah, we can set it that way, but you, what you really want to do, basically, is whenever you're setting a new object, whenever you're declaring a new object, you want to tell it 
what um, data type that object will be associated with. So we're going to make our first object. So let's just get rid of all this first. Um, and we'll actually just delete all this. We'll, we'll keep this. So we have our variable here. But also let's go ahead and add some more stuff like a, um, a constructor. So code generate constructor. And then okay. So that basically that just, if you don't know what code generate does, that just generates a constructor for us so we don't have to type it manually. So yeah, so basically this is a, just a constructor that whenever you declare uh, a new object of this class, then you have to put in the variable. And then uh, yeah, so it's basically going to set that variable equal to the parameter constructor that you set in and blah, blah, blah. So if you know how to do classes, then you should already know this. But the difference is, of course, we're using our param type. So um, it doesn't actually it doesn't actually have to be associated with a single data type you can set the data type whenever you're making the object, okay? So you'll see in a second what I mean by that. So let's go and add our getters and our setters this time. So getter and setter, boom, boom, okay? So now we have a getter and setter for our variable, and cool. So yeah, so now that we actually, you know, have our class set up, our parameter, parameters, parameterized class um, thing set up, let's go and make a object of that class. So we'll say booty, and then now right here, we can set the uh, param type, okay? So we can fill in this, basically, this is basically a parameter for your class, okay? So we can fill this in with string, if we want it to be a string. Or we can do integer, if we want it to be an integer. But just make sure that you don't use primitive types, okay? It has to be a uh, class, okay? Not a primitive type. So basically what I mean is it, has to, it can't be int, it has to be integer. And it can't be double, it has to be double, like the class for double, or whatever it is. And so, yeah, stuff like that, okay? So we'll set it to integer for now, just to keep it simple. Simple. Um, so booty integer is equal to, or no, we need to give it a name. So booty1 is equal to new booty. And then, of course, right here, we can actually insert our constructor, okay? Because we have a constructor set here. So we have to provide one anyway. So we'll give it the constructor of 45 because we set it to integer, okay? So it needs to take an integer. But of course, right here, we also have to set the sensor. So that will also tell it, okay? So, yep. So now that we have this, we can use it. So we can uh, do some stuff with it, of course, like a normal object. So we can do um, booty, uh, booty one dot set variable to 40, you know, something like that. Um, let's see, what's, why is this grayed out? Let's see here. Explicit type argument integer can be replaced with blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's see here. Um, I believe I have my thing set to the wrong. Let's see here. Okay, we're good. Never mind. So anyway, I guess it doesn't matter if we have integer. Because we already set it here, so I guess it doesn't matter if we have it here also. So that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, but we're just going to leave it because I recommend that you do that because that's how I learned how to do it. So basically, yeah. So basically, yeah, we're just setting our, uh, I keep saying basically, yeah, but. So we can just print out booty one dot um, get variable. So we'll do that. So uh, booty one dot get variable and boom. So that should print out 40 because we're setting, we're replacing the 45 with 40, of course. This is simple methods, you know. So yeah, we get 40 when we print it out. And yeah, so let's go ahead and make another object, okay. And this is where it gets really magical because um, even though this class right now is going to be an integer because we set it to integer, we actually can make a same object. We can make another object of that same class and then set it to any other data type that we want it to, want it to be. So we can t set it to a string if you want to. Okay. So booty two is equal to new booty uh, string, and then we can set the uh, what's it called constructor here. So we could say um, something like hmm. This is cool, period, and boom. So now we have that. So booty uh, two dot set variable. Oh, wow. And then we can print it out if we want to. Booty two dot get variable, okay? So let's try testing that out. Hopefully it should print out wow if we did it correctly. <coughs> Excuse me. So cool. Um, let's just go over this one more time. Hopefully you get a firm understanding of it. So basically, we're declaring a new class here, but the difference with this class between, you know, this class and regular classes is that it has a parameter, parameterized type, meaning that we can actually set the um, 
data type upon creation. And so we can use that data type as a template to fill in here. So that means that anything inside of our class here will be using that data type, okay? So basically, hopefully you get the point. It's really simple, right? So basically, yeah, here we're using an integer. So basically you can cut this and basically replace this everything here with an integer. So that means that object will also be an integer, okay? But don't do that. But anyway, so that object will also be an integer. So yeah, um, so booty2 is a string because we set it to string. And then booty1 is an integer because we set it to integer, okay? So that's really cool, really magical. And uh, yeah, so... So there's another example I want to show you that's really cool. You already know what it is. It's just auto unboxing. But let me show you how this works with um, generics, okay? So the generics, it actually does that. So we'll do, let's make a integer here. So integer, or no, int, we'll do a primitive type. So int one is equal to, and then let's set it to booty one dot give variable, okay? So the value of booty one, of course, or the variable inside of booty one. Um, so give variable, okay? So this is actually valid because um, well, you're setting an integer to an int, which you think is the same thing, but it's actually not because on the left side, you have an int primitive type, okay? But on the right side, you actually have the integer class, okay? They're, built, they're both actually different, so, okay? What it's doing, what it's doing is it's unboxing integer here on the right side and two in int uh, primitive data type, okay? So it's very simple, but that's what it's doing. Um, so the same thing with strings. You have a string literal or whatever you want to call it on the left side or primitive data type, whatever you want to call it. On the left side, and we can set on the right side to equal the string object here, okay? So it's basically going to ob uh, unbox the string object. Oops. New, oh, not new. Uh, booty to dot get variable, okay? So, so yeah, it's unboxing this actual object into the string literal here, okay? So yeah, very simple, but it's that's what it's doing. It's very cool. But um, also something you want to keep in mind is that you cannot set um, booty1 up here this first object uh, equal to booty2, okay? Because of course they are two different objects, okay? So you can unbox a object into its primitive data type, but you can't um, uh, unbox one object to another object basically, okay? That just doesn't even make sense, okay? So, well, especially with the string and an integer, okay? Because they're not related at all, really. Um, so yeah, that's very simple. But, uh, um, so, so hopefully you know how to work with generics now. It's very simple. You just uh, basically give your class a parameter and then you could apply it whatever, wherever you want to, as you can see by the boxes here. I'm using it a lot of times. So I'm going to show you now some examples of why you might want to use generics instead of just regular. So basically, um, we can actually do the, all of this with a regular class if you don't know. Uh, well, most of it at least. So let me show you. So basically, if we make a regular class here, so class, um, let's see here, we'll call it cat. So cat, um, and then we, we're not going to use a parameterized type, of course, because we're doing it reg, uh, the regular method. So you could do something like this, object, object, okay. And then we could give it a variable, uh, well, a constructor, of course, I mean. So public cat, um, and then instead of using, like, you know, the param type um, parameter kind of thingy, we could actually just use object, object, or, yeah, basically object, object. So this is our parameter, and inside this we do objects is equal to object, of course. So basically, instead of actually setting this to integer or something like that, or int, I mean, we can actually set it to be an object, so it's not of any type explicitly, it's just, it can be any type. Because, I mean, if you think about it, integer, mm -hmm. string, double, flow, all of those class objects are basically um, subclasses of this superclass of object, okay? Any object is a subclass of object, if I remember correctly, okay? So that means we could use this as a template inside of here, which is really magical because we can apply what we're doing here to here. But the new way to do things is up here because you don't want to use this old way, okay? Um, because I'm about to show you why, by the way, so don't worry. So we can actually have some other methods here, like our getters and our setters, and we can generate that if we want to. It'll actually do that for us. So there we go. So now we have our getters and our setters. Really cool. So yeah, let's go ahead and actually use this now. Okay, so that's it. So if we actually want to use this class here, we could do something like, um, hmm, let's do like cat kitty, oops, kitty is equal to new cat. Okay, and then we can give it a variable um, 45. Okay, so that works because um, even though we're not actually saying um, as for an integer, it's asking for an object, okay? 
And so what it's doing, we can give it an object of 45. Well, that's actually not an object. That's an integer primitive type. But what it's going to do is auto box to the object of 45. Um, I'm pretty sure. But it doesn't matter. Anyway, you get the point that we can actually use a string here too. We can use any data type. So basically, yeah. So it's really cool. <laughs> um, really magical. But you don't want to do this because there's some issues. But first, let's actually set another one just to have. Uh, so kitty2 is equal to new cat. And it will say meow, because cat's meow. So basically, um, you remember how I showed you the, the what's it called, auto unboxing here, where it actually unboxes the integer object into an integer primitive type, and the same with string. We, uh, it doesn't actually have that feature with this regular class here, because um, um, it doesn't really know that, well, it knows that, but because you're not using parameterized types, okay? So whenever you're using parameterized types, it knows that you're using parameterized types, so it'll automatically unbox for you, but now it doesn't know. So basically, if we do something like this, int, um, we'll do string actually, wait, yes, yeah, int 3 is equal to integer. Um, we'll actually get rid of this for now, so I'll show you that it doesn't work. So kitty dot uh, get object, okay? So basically, this will get the object of kitty, which is going to be the integer, of course, because we're using integer here. And so this will be right here. This will be an integer um, object. So integer will be filled in here automatically, basically, if you think about it. So yeah, I'm rambling. But basically what this means is that on the right side, you have an integer, okay? Integer object. But on the left side, of course, you have the integer primitive type, okay? But it can't auto unbox because it doesn't know that it's a parameterized type. Or that's what you're trying to do. Java doesn't know that's what you're trying to do. So what you have to do is automatically cast it yourself. So we have to put integer in front. So now it works because it's unboxing the integer into this, basically. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, yeah. So we can also do this with strings, of course. You know, you can do it with any objects, basically, for stuff like this. So string four is equal to string kitty two dot get object. Okay. So yeah, that works. So it's auto unboxing for you, basically. And yeah. So Remember before how we were not able to set um, booty1 to equal to booty2 because they were two different object types? Um, this is not exactly the case with um, this type of way with regular classes because um, basically if you think about it, um, this um, this class is not using any parameterized type so it's going to be an object the whole time basically. Um, it's hard to explain, but basically, this is an object, not a not a uh, integer, and this is also an object, not a string. Okay. Um, so basically, you're setting an object to an object, and an object can equal an object, of course, because it's not an integer. And yeah, it's a little confusing, but basically, this is valid Java, but it's not supposed to be. And we can prove that by doing something like this. So int five is equal to integer uh, kitty dot get object. Okay. So this will actually work, but if we get rid of this here, oops, kitty.getObject actually doesn't work anymore because we're setting kitty, well, kitty is equal to string, of course, right? And so we're setting string equal to kitty, which is an integer. So now this integer supposedly is a string. Well, we are, we're supposed to think that because Java lets this run, uh, it doesn't give us an error here. But basically, this is not valid because you're setting a string equal to, equal to an integer. But let's just keep going. So this is a string now. So this string here is, is being set back into an integer primitive type, but you can't do that. It's invalid, invalid, whatever. So yeah, hopefully that made sense. I know I'm horrible at explaining, but the point is you can't do it, okay? And the real point is don't even use this, okay? Use generics, okay? Generics is magical. Generics is cool. So use generics, okay? So um, this is a very simple episode, I hope. It wasn't too, ex too crazy. I just like to give you a lot of examples just to make sure it's in your brain. So the real important thing you need to know is how to use parameterized types. So make sure you know how to do it. It's very simple. Just you know, make sure you have these angle brackets here. And then you give it a variable name, whatever you want to call it. And boom. Then you're done. And then you can do whatever. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And don't forget, in the description, we have a link here that gives you all of the code from today's episode. Okay, It's really magical. And yeah, so if you want to use it, Make sure you bookmark it, whatever, save it, use it as a reference, whatever you want to do. Because sometimes you forget code, sometimes I forget code, so it's very important to save stuff. Yeah. So if you have any questions, leave a comment. I hope you, we also have a Discord that's in the description. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.